Greetings everyone and welcome back to Tier No, the last days of Philip Hart, but always on the move. The drive from Dill's airport, Kissinger noted the irony of flying in through an airport named after a man who no doubt would have loathed his current actions. Always felt far longer than it was, but eventually his motorcade was crossing the Potomac. He had always liked the sight of the skyline of the Smithsonian, those monuments glistening white in the sunlight. It reminded him of what America had been to him all those years ago when he'd stepped off a boat from the Third Reich as a refugee with nothing to his name, and now he was here, the liaison between a president and an emperor. The car pulled up to the White House, and a few minutes later, Kissinger was standing before President Hart. The nuclear talks have gone very well, he said. There's an Apple crossover in tensions, and I believe that we are moving towards an agreement. The President nodded. Excellent. What are the next steps? We're moving, I believe, to the most dangerous phase of the negotiations, Kissinger said. Clarification is required as the involvement of the United States and Japan in each other's spheres of influence. Unlike the previous round, this is more than simply a matter of honor. I expect some sacrifices may have to be made here if we want Dayton to succeed. We shall see if the cost is too great, and it's 3 a.m. Go figure. Our baptism of fire on the so-called drug crisis came during our time on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Working with Senator Birch Bay, we have discovered that not only were millions of illegal drugs and narcotics produced and sold each year, but that were vast international enterprises devoted to maintaining them. Thanks to the culture of moral laxity and failure to combat these networks, millions have become addicted to drugs such as heroin, methamphetamines, and marijuana. The issue is one that is close and personal to President Hart, and he will he will be spending many hours working directly with the Federal Bureau of Narcotics to destroy these networks. A Bush commission to target every person involved in these enterprises, from the bosses up all the way top down to the drug peddle on the street. It won't destroy this illegal drug trade, but you can be sure this administration will we'll do all it can to put a dent in its operations. How increase security, uh, policy effectiveness drift, per crime prevention will gain effectiveness and handling crime by 9%, crime rate will decrease by 4.1%, spending power will increase, urban wealth will increase their disdain, and the security of every American is our responsibility. Through our efforts, we have out cultivated a trust that through our tenure, America will be safe. And I do want to do these as well. Because we have these as well. Moonrise, Alice Springs, Auckland, Thunder Bay, Saskatoon, Belize City, and Nassau. These are all cities lacking U.S. bases. The Hart administration is of the belief that we should change them. A multitude of U.S. bases in our allies countries will be strengthened the interconnectedness of our alliance. Uh, as such, it has been decided that a new wave of overseas bases will be constructed outside of the country. Thus giving us and our allies better operability beyond our borders. So, I do want to do breaking the ice as well eventually. Um, of course, we can nice. Well, Sonian Optimist. Uh, Metternich realist. Metternichian realist. <clears throat> An entire day of work, working meetings, droning briefings, and mind numbing iterations of previous policy taking a toll on the president fell apart. I was ready to call it quits. The final day's final meeting had been between Hart and the National Security Advisor, Kissinger. They discussed the diplomatic protocols of topic both we were more than happy to put aside. As President Hart slung his coat over his shoulder, Dr. Kissinger did something unexpected. Instead of leaving promptly, he approached the president's desk and asked Mr. President, Would you mind if I walked to your residence? A brief shot came and passed with the president who quickly returned in the, in the affirmative. He didn't mind, but the walk wasn't terribly long. Kissinger replied, I don't mind, I don't care about the walk, and the two started. What I really care about Lee and Kissinger is Germany. We cannot reason with them. Our military service in the Second World War engendered them enough or enough to stand for the European superpower, but serving the presidency galvanized these feelings to a new level. We can isolate them, cut them off until he stopped himself. Until the regime collapses, surely. It is childish to fantasize that the government will end up in vanish. Kissinger finished the presence aboard of thought, and silence fell over the duel, save for striding or striding clicking from the heels scuffing against panel flooring. The alternative was doing nothing, which satisfied nobody, so the president felt obligated to act. That'll happen, it'll be my policy. You won't isolate the entire pack. Issue, you know that all sanctions and put the squeeze on transnational businesses, and we'll do it quickly. The president beamed so proudly that Kissinger nearly found himself sucked into the optimism of a year and We can build a grand coalition against revolutionary, Fr uh, not France, but Germany. And we may succeed, but the failure runs the risk of letting the public point fingers. The implication of Kissinger's words stung hard, but he remained undeterred. They approached the oak doors that demarcated the residence of the entrance hall, and President Hart turned to face his company. Henry started, I'll do what uh, Kissinger kiss abruptly cut off the president with a wave of his hand. I would stick to policy, Mr. President. Good night. And with that, the National Security Advisor turned his heel and walked away. All things considered, the president felt sick to his stomach. The crossroads of obligation and ambition is neglect. But like I said, we do have some comms to go through. Uh, we're doing pretty well over here still. The growth is not as much as it should be, really, but we have about 100, 103 ish, roughly, billion in uh, debt, which sucks. Soaring energy costs, but we're still doing this. Commission nuclear power plants, you know, we're still building here. Build, 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 build. That's us. Um, other than that, heart monitor. It's it's going all right. You know, it's not bad. It's not great. Not bad. Um, keep things stable. Sure, why not? It's 3 a.m. Good, but the pact is keeping up with us very, very surely. Keeping a move on things. Issue, vegetarian, understaffed issue. Um, we're doing relatively okay-ish in some of these areas, too. So, Moonrise. And the whole smoke and mirrors thing. We're at 99%. That's really good. Holy crap. We're almost out of manpower, too. 16.5%. Uh, whatever. 
And down here, honestly, there's nothing else going on down here, so let's find, uh, kind of ignore it for now. So, uh, Moonrise, and then let's do Midnight. On the streets of Manila, the jungles of Malaya, off the Ivory Coast, and the scrub of South Africa, wherever the free world struggles, we will come to their rescue. The only war that matter we lost, and any war that we fight directly will end in nuclear annihilation. It is in this blurred line that Harry Truman believes America will excel. Proxy wars far and wide, secret agents. Clandestinely undermining the clay feet that these colossi stand upon. It's all the light of liberty bathes the world in its glow, one step at a time. Well, boost public relations during participation proxy wars? I should have done this way earlier, but breaking the deadlock. Ever since the end of the Asia Pacific War, the continued American presence in the Pacific has been a cause of anxiety for the government and the Empire. Of the Empire, Ambassador Takeuchi said, just during the map of the region in the way that Kissinger thought to be wholly unnecessary. Particularly with recent conflicts within the sphere itself, there are many of the Japanese government who view your alliance's position in the Pacific to be fundamentally odd with the detente. I understand their position, Kissinger said, adjusting his glasses, but surely you must also understand that America cannot simply abandon allies that are soldiers of spent blood to defend. If we were to do what some of the militaries in Tokyo would ask of our diplomatic credibility, we'd be ruined. All our allies would worry of throwing us to the walls whenever it was asked of us. I fully understand that, Takachi, Takayuchi said. Clearly some very complex diplomacy will be needed if we are to manage this balancing act. Diplomacy that I don't believe it would be productive to conduct from Washington any longer. Kissinger rose from his eyebrows. Are you saying? Takayuchi nodded. A glint of pride in his eyes. How would you like to go to Tokyo? I thought we were there. Proofing. Uh, despite what Dr. Kissinger might think on the subject, President Hart enjoyed a few, uh, one few opportunities he had to collaborate with the Secretary of State on drafting legislation. On top of their history in the Senate, Hart admired Truman's cold warrior attitudes and relates with a deft understanding of politics on Capitol Hill. If anyone could find something wrong with an anti-Nazi embargo bill, it was Truman. What do you think? asked the President, who watched eagerly as Truman thumbed the, bill, the bill's pages. After sufficient time for reading had passed, the aged Secretary of State laid the manila envelope down flat and looked hard in the eyes. I think if Ike were here began, involving Hart's wartime supreme commander and his precursor as president, Dwight D. Eisenhower, he'll blush. The ability to the work and then some, I think that's what we need. His fingers then crept back towards the envelope and withdrew the opening summary, which he read, read with glee. Those Nazi sons of guns will hate this. Foul language aside, fellow part fell similar part for the bill. If passed, it would be the most decisive act of legislation against Germany since Congress's declaration of war. And would isolate Germany's sphere from one of the world's largest markets. For that reason, Truman predicted massive support for the bill and offered his congratulations to the president ahead of time. This embargo saved Europe, said Truman, whose excitement was contagious. After receiving the elder statement's approval, the bar embargo bill was returned to its writers, briefly annotated, and officially placed for consideration. Nazism will be destroyed. City pledge. Bojahawks don't like that. Railroad crossing. Amtrak is business. The National Railroad Passenger Cooperation, or our flagship public rail initiative, referred to as Amtrak, or Amtrak, uh, and most accurately, Amtrak, is at last in service. It's no better time, too, since the early 1900s. Rail's fallen headlong into decline. Passenger service routes lines are hard on the drop, and the U.S. Post Office Department has diverted its main delivery from the use of passenger trains to other transport, and train lines are talking about filing for bankruptcy. This ends now, Amtrak is in business, and a new era for passenger train will begin soon. Though we have yet to create defined plans for their cooperation, its goals will be lofty. We will not settle for some stopgap solution that keeps passenger train transport functional through the next decade or half century. Nor will we completely nationalize the trains the way the blundering socialists like Bukharin did. No, we use Amtrak as a sort of actuator arm to stimulate the creation of a real public transit system in the country to rival and surpass the Yamato and the Hitlerite system of transportation. Well, at least that is the goal. Uh, okay, so convert abandoned roads to parks. That's not bad. Running goes down. I don't like that, though. Lower the speed limits? Oh, I don't like that. Construct monorails. Public transportation will increase. We get more inflation, more debt. That's okay. Up, cost of upkeep and average city will increase by a lot. And traffic speed will increase. Okay. I'm good with that one. 43, they're wary. That's not good. Um, urban wealth, uh, that's really not good. But some comments include. Ah, meanwhile, nationalizing and electrifying the U.S. railway industries, which really bright. Uh, ensure the bright future of industry that is at least on the most timeline. Someone says this heart run feels like a current liberal wet dream, to be honest. At least the US ones, excluding all the laws similar to the Singapore and some uh, incense. Oh, and they went to war with each other. Someone says, I guess adding that right to evoke unwarranted search was a huge mistake, huh? Well, you know, sometimes we make mistakes. Oh, good God, this is disgusting. Well, you, me, I love getting involved in Iran. It's my favorite place to get involved in sometimes when I like to blow up people. Yeah. Yeah, we like to blow up people. Why not? You, you're here? Good luck. Don't screw it up. What else can we do here? We have so many options. Oh. 45? Yeah, they're going to be surpassing us soon. More suspicion? I don't know. Maybe not. 600 delegates aligned to us? We'll see. Uh, there are more issues here. Shucks.
Still building up all that stuff, though. Nice. All right, so you guys. Gotta protect the capital. I'm thinking we might attack here first, or maybe, maybe we can attack the second right here. We should do fine. Right. 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 Midnight. The private eye. Negotiate the purchase of de decommissioned rail. <clears throat> the democracy mobile. Spending power increases. I do want to do the uh, uh, cost for stuff as well. Little America. Urban stability as much as we can get. Budget hawks, sure. For far too long, administration after administration has been seen fit to overlook violations of legislation put in place to protect the rights of labor. Staff the National Labor Relations Board with the cronies either unable or unwilling to enforce laws, letting businesses upset the balance between the worker and employer in the name of economic growth and political stability. Thankfully, President Hart and Attorney General Rivikoff have so much... No such qualms. With the fresh slate of appointments to the NLRB and a newly empowered mandate to enforce the provisions of the Wagner Act, businesses will think twice before trampling over the rights of labor. Nice. Uh, increases the likelihood of Republicans voting in favor of our agenda. And the city pledge wouldn't be bad. Basically, this just negates the city pledge, so... Um, I would like to do this as much as possible, though, but uh, the private eye. One of the first areas of the economy that Amtrak will hit will be the private sector. As we have stated beforehand, it's a perfect opportunity for such a measure. Railways are shutting down left to right centers, passenger ridership declines, and revenue decays. Before we proceed, however, let us be very clear about one thing we do not see now. Nor do we expect to see a need to build a new railway system from scratch. Now the network that we, might have, that we have right now is already a great bar beginning. What we need to do is retool, rework, and repair the railway system until it's worthy of American Americans and no longer reminiscent of some Arab backwater. The incursion of Amtrak and the American private rail sector will be twofold. First, we'll buy up abandoned rails with a view on repurposing them. And second, we'll cut leases and contracts to modernize other companies' Rangley's railways. Rangley's beast, or best. So the Central Asia office of the CIA had recently been inundated with files. Turks Kens has been sparked a massive concentration of funds and agencies in the regions. But while the focus might be on those with the shoes on the ground, a large bulk of the work was being done back at Langley via intelligence analysis. At the center of the ever-growing mountain of paperwork sat David Chambers, the longtime leader in counterintelligence in the CIA office. Until up until recent months ago, a couple months ago, it seemed a cushy job, simply clock in, read some cursory reports, relay orders from on high, and spend the rest of the day hitting on the secretary playing billards in the rec room. It was so easy, in fact, he'd eventually been given charge of logistics as well, as once Jerry was needed over in the tricky office. Those days felt like a distant memory already. This infernal conference was making his job hack. Yet even with an ever-growing team at his back, he was expected to shuffle through the countless papers that were overtaking his office like an invasive species. This situation led him to where he's now found himself, running through Langley's halls, cradling a sheet of, single sheet of paper. A few minutes later, a message spread, spread across the world. From Virginia into that all-important land, quietly nestled between empires, three lines rang out to those attempting to influence the region's future. Japanese interference increasing, exact aim and methods are unknown. Continued urgencies of the utmost importance. But we can modernize Amtrak from Boston to New York City. Line will be purchased. Modernization will begin. Progress will be periodically charted on the map above. We more cost, but that's okay. Massachusetts will be connected to New York City via Connecticut. Is this supposed to cost political power? Because it's not going down. Houston and... Look at this. It's really cool. Fated nations. Since the end of the Second World War, the United States has skirted a line with the Nazi Germany. Diplomatic relations between the two countries were overwhelmingly hostile, but some of the silent connections had returned. Still, some pre-war business had returned in. The faltering power of the Reich engendered the nation for most Americans as a troublesome, if impotent, state across the ocean. However, this was no longer the 50s, and sweeping reforms within the Reich meant the resigned colossus was gaining its footing quickly to the President Philip Hart. No time seemed more appropriate for decisive action. Decisive action, the President clarified, speaking pointedly into the te television cameras, meant a unilateral, unambiguous embargo of all unity packed nations. It was speaking in te television access across the country, framed between two freestanding American flags on either side of the Oval Office desk. We must isolate Germany because it is the evilest nation in the world. If we continue to feed into the prosperity which itself is built on the backs of mass murder, then how can we call ourselves a freedom loving people? This is a test not of our military alliances, but rather an endorsement of morality and decency. The president is Pause briefly. Suddenly, frightful the rhetorical leap his administration was about to make by regaining himself. The German occupation reaches from the Atlantic coast into the Russian heartland and is sustained by suffering. Can we bear to see the day that certain people have simply been ceased to exist outside of the United States? President Hark sucked in some air and prepared for this crescendo. Germany's hegemony in Europe was long thought to be on the decline, but this is the truth instead. Germany's recovering from its slump and may again impose its terror upon the world. I say this to all like minded nations of the world. Democratic values and tolerance of Nazism are incomparable. Join the free world in condemning state terror and bringing justice to the imprisoned of people of Europe. Thank you. No compromise against fascism. As we were now uh, doing, of course, the private eye, uh, the city pledge, fiddling around the private railway sector and making our old railways worthy of the modern American citizens is well and good, but it's not a be-all, end-all. Nor will it suffice to prove the merits of Amtrak and its program to the average American businessman and civilian. 
Several forward thinking of city administrations, leaders of what the Hart administration has tended to refer to as model cities adhering to the city pledge, have already opted into the government's urbaniz uh, urban modernization initiative. Therefore, in addition to support all of the proposals being worked on, they'll prepare themselves for local rail installations. These local rail installations may or may not have involved connecting the model cities to their broader countrywide system rail or rail system. Regardless of whether they do want things for certain to be involved in what most of the railway plans, city center rail systems are that cannot be but benefit the place where they are built. An American Shikansen. It's not enough for us to build railways in cities or refurbish old tracks, we must make support. But the Amtrak initiative is a matter of patriotism. Fortunately, President Harvest was well aware of a perfect thing at to at once shame American complacency, inspiring the American people and galvanizing the business and industry in the direction we desire. The sh Shinkansen, the new main line of Japanese, colloquially referred to as the bullet train, is a technological achievement of epochal evidence, uh, significance, and one that puts the rest of the world to shame, like the ordinance that gave the bullet train its colloquial moniker. These Japanese rapid transit apparatuses shoot from Tokyo to Osaka in two and a half hours, where driving can take easily take six or more. We, the American people, are more than capable of equaling and overtaking this technology. Amtrak may not be ahead of the curve now, but once American bullet train development kicks into high gear and yields results, we, not Japan, will be the place to look for our expertise and examples of and public Embargo fails the Senate vote. Kissinger had been surprised when he heard the news out of the Senate. The embargo against Germany, the decisive blow against that thing, gang of thieves and monsters, have failed. Senator James Buckley had given some pontificating speech on rewarding recent encouraging reforms from Germany, and apparently enough of his colleagues had brought, bought it. It was over. As Kissinger reflected on the situation, he didn't know why he was surprised, of course. Of course, those weak-minded fools who cared more about pandering to the idiocy of the American voter were taken in by the honey words of Albert Speer. Speer would engineer the very economy that enslaved Europa. Uh, Speer, who sat fat in the mansion of the laborers' victims in the Congress of the United States, could not see through the lies of such an obvious piece of pawn scum. Guess you your side. There is nothing for it, sadly. He was not blessed to be working within a system where men who actually had some small concept of good sense were empowered to rule. He would accept the idiocy of American voters as he had a countless other limitations life had imposed on his genius. He would soldier on as he always had. Men in never had to deal with this nonsense. Germany continues links to the American sphere. Well... Is Sperry even leaning? I thought it was Borman's leaning. So that auto bypass, um, that auto happened because there was no bill being voted on, so. So I used Khan's commands to got this event instead. Kissinger, for once, did not need to pretend to smile as he stood next to President Hart. The President was giving a speech, of course, extolling the passage of the embargo against Germany ruled Europe through Congress. But Kissinger didn't care what the speech said, only the results. And they spoke for themselves. Third Reich, the most dangerous regime in human history, will be cut off from the vast segments of the world economy. They'd be one step closer to the defeat they so richly deserved, and that was his triumph. Kissinger approached Hart, and after he had signed the bill for the cameras, Mr. President, I just want to say I greatly appreciate what you've done here today, he said. It gives me immense hope for the future of this country that we have in the Oval Office a man who sees the existential threat of the madman of Berlin and is encouraged to act accordingly. I greatly look forward to the chance to further collaborate with you on national security in the these trying times. Hart, for his part, not giving his national security advisor a smile. Thank you, Henry. I'm glad we worked together on this. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have other matters to look into. Kissinger smirked as he watched his boss walk off. Well, that went well. If you're wondering about sunset, please go ahead. I might find the one for Star Set, Starlight, I mean, and then do it anyways, but the Japanese offer. Kissinger sat on a couch in the guest room in the Prime Minister's residence. His eyes somehow still open despite a best four hours of sleep, scanning the note, processing each point in turn. Both sides would commit to scaling down the forces in the Asia Pacific region. Both sides would undertake a gentleman's agreement to avoid militarily intervening in proxy wars against one another and to mutually focus on rolling back German influence, but that wasn't all. It's a good of a solution, I must give them credit, Kissinger said as he handed the note to Winston Lord. They know we can never openly concede the influence of the Pacific. We've won in our proxy wars back to the sphere, so they skip right to the informal solution. A lot of their Zebatus back in, and they can gradually reclaim control of all the countries we've lost influence in without anyone but the Beltway insiders knowing or caring. And besides, what would we really be conceding? We're normalizing relations anyway. We'd have to access to those markets. It's an elegant solution on paper, Lord said. I'm just not so sure about it in practice. They're asking to give us up what American boys have fought and bled for, and maybe the public won't pick up on this, but Congress? Again, the votes to pass us will be a real battle, ja Jackson, Kirk, Patrick. They'll be working against us with everything they have. Kissinger waved his hand. We'll get them fallen now. We'll just write the treaty so they look ridiculous so they try to tell the public what this means. It'll only come into effect ten years on, and no one will care by then. Lord fidgeted in his seat. Ah, uh, it's not just Jackson and Kirkpatrick I'm worried about. What we're trying to do won't be popular with everyone, but who knows about it. I'm only worried someone will have a misguided belief about what their patriotic duty is. If this gets out, it'll ruin the president. It'll ruin the party, and then all of this is gone until they discredit it. Kissinger a bit back a promise about clamping down on leaks. He knew it would sound hollow. Lord was right. They can never be sure, but if they turn back now, daytime will be complete. It's worth the risk. She would allow Japan to invest in open aligned states in the Pacific. Nice. Look at all that money we're, make, we're making now. As we're still down here, but we're doing a lot. Yeah, not bad. Where's our other divisions, though? Oh, you're going over there, huh? Alright. Do the best you can. Just bulletin through here. Guesswork. As a national security advisor, 
Dr. Henry Kissinger has a few explicit responsibilities beyond ensuring the President has an ample advice on matters of national security against anything else. Like Kissinger sitting in on cabinet meetings, his large staff and the prominent media presence were entirely the invention of Dr. Kissinger himself. He liked the popularity and believed that publicity serves as a political purpose too. A well-respected popular diplomat was much more successful than a bureaucratic nobody. In fact, Kissinger so emphatically believed in the utility of a celebrity statesman that a segment of his staff devoted part of their duties to monitoring the diplomat's public perception. The creative bulk of various national newspapers arriving at the Kissinger office started at 7 in the morning and continued in a stream, light stream until the delivery doors were locked for the evening. These newspapers were skimmed for a few key words, their columns clipped and sorted, then delivered to Dr. Kissinger for his own reading. National publications ranged from neutrality uh, to adoration of Kissinger, but the relationship strained in local papers. Some papers published genuine criticism of uh, his secretive negotiations and his moral uh, diplomacy. Uh, while others appeal to local ignorance and contempt. Puppet master and conspiracy jumped from the pages to irritate Kissinger, but his feelings remain opaque. It isn't who I am, he would say, before disposing of the clipping, so it doesn't bother me. And for an office of obedient admirers, that was enough. Ground best kept on touch. Nice. Langley's brightest. <laughs> David Chambers nursed a throbbing headache with an unusually reserved glass of whiskey, of course. Uh, brought to him by the squad who had recently spent her time musing on the free, uh, freeing lack of attention her long-time boss was dining. Uh, intelligence papers blanketed the office, originating from Germania, Tokyo, Nanjing, and New Delhi. The trail let him down was meandering, but it couldn't, wouldn't stop him from putting together a clear image in his mind of the machinations that work around this darn Turk's kens. Oh crap, I forgot about that. <clears throat> the Germans were so easy to pin down. They simply wanted the conference to end in the most favorable outcome with their interests, and while the Legion might be a collection of such ages as most eclectic fascists, but they weren't exactly subtle in their actions. <clears throat> Tracing their operations was child playing, thus Uncle Sam had plenty to go off when trying to meddle in their work. Uh, let's see, the Japanese were another matter entirely. Their aims were becoming clearer and clearer, though they lacked hard evidence, but pinning down exactly what they were going to do by the goals required an understanding of their immense intelligence network, spanning the continent and sliding, uh, settling right up to the Central Asian borders. <clears throat> Every day, David uncovered a new Afghan smuggling ring or Iranian Islamist cell and promptly sent information to those on the ground. It was tedious, it was strenuous, and he could swear it was slowly killing his back, but it was also necessary. The span of the Japanese operation was critical, especially as they only seemed to grow with each passing week. He hoped that his carefully devised plan for smoking them out might be ready soon, but till then it was back to the mental step. Oh, there's another lead to drop down. Betty, be dear, grab me another pen, would you? Please, and thank you. Nice. Nice. Going in, 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 in. There goes those groups. Very good. Happy October, everybody. I know, just trying to get through all this stuff is so slow. My God. There's so many bits in reading, and it's TNO. I'm not going to complain too much. I'll complain enough. But still. This is going to be pretty whipped right now. The past treaty. Hard adjusted his glasses down to the treaty. There would be nu nuclear withdrawals in the Pacific and commitment to non interference in the spheres of influence. He looked up at Kissinger, sitting from across from him in the Oval Office. How are spheres of influence exactly defined? It's, it's in Article 7, Section 4C, Kissinger said in a sentence that had been quite clearly rehearsed. The current co prosperity sphere plus Pacific West of Hawaii and the Indian Ocean is their area of influence. The entire Western Hemisphere is ours, plus Western Africa, the rest is fair game. <clears throat> our stroke is Jim. So we're free to compete with them in some areas, but our essential interests are off limits. And you believe that the Japanese will use this, rep this reprieve to focus on the Germans? Japanese are rational people, Mr. President, Mr. Kissinger said. They would not rule Asia if they were not. They have sacrificed, if anything, more than we have to get this document here. Believe me, they would not be enraging the better part of their own general staff if they didn't intend to follow through. <clears throat> That's a good deal, Henry. You've done well. Hart looked back down to the trees. Just I don't know if America will agree. His mind wandered to the bigger picture of civil rights, health care, urban development. There was so much to fight for. Passing this treaty through Congress could turn out to be one of the struggle too many. Let's get this thing signed, Senate to Congress. An American betrayal. Well, that's bugged. Uh, the Pacific Area Security Treaty of the Senate. Because right now, they should have actually more sympathy. Oh, we're actually a little more sympathizers than them. But we must have 600 delegates aligned to us? Well, we do. We hope and provided the success of alliances. A similar thing could work in Central Asia. Propose an alliance between the members of the conference. This required an overwhelming maturity, though. But, but that says that. I might just do that anyway, so as good as we can, but we'll see. Also, this is, I didn't even realize it, but there's numbers here. 775 and 724, that's impossible to read. Um, just keep it on everything else. Um, no bills being voted on. Lower speed limits. Cost upkeep will go down. I don't want to do this one, so. We'll do everything we can, uh, we need to in the end, so. Um, so we got that done, take a step back. 
My card choices while accessing the budget make cuts where necessary to keep his agenda moving forward. Rocky to the Rockies. Towering Republican figures assure his agenda is a future in Congress. Talking down the bosses. Some smooth talk to truly understand President Hart's plans. Take a step back. We just need one of these though, right? Everything else shall be made new. Mr. Amtrak, that's really cool. But we're gonna go with this one next. Budget Hawks. Well, everyone's still wary of us. This is really cool. I like this a lot. The CIA is doing stuff, you know, like normal. Between worlds, before the Second World War, Eastern Europe immigrant commu communities had a long history in the United States and popular ethnic enclaves across the country. Access victory brought a surge of Eastern European immigrants initially rebuffed by the State Department due to the immigration quotas, which spurned the, ref the formation of local minority solidarity societies. These societies represented ethnic Eastern Europeans and regional minority groups and successfully lobbied the Eisenhower and Kefalfer administrations to grant exemptions to refugees. The overall no total number of post-war refugees was low compared to pre-existing communities, but the public victories for these societies kickstarted the rise of political prominence. <clears throat> Today, organizations like the Committee for Free Eastern Europe and Baltic Freedom continue to die headlines for their political contributions to international advocacy. Each organization was different, however, with ideological leanings differing among them, some like the Bukharan Society and the Free Lithuania Group, where the convictions openly while the National Committee for Free Europe remained dubiously associated with the CIA. It was a mixed bag with a homegrown community organization involved in an undeniably powerful segment of American politics and were sure to continue influencing affairs for years to come. God, our growth is not very good compared to our inflation, Jesus Christ. But everything else is looking pretty decent, pretty decent overall. Um, especially industrial expertise is looking pretty good, as well as academic base. Primary schooling will increase, <clears throat> but I do want to do Rocky to the Rockies, maybe. Um, I don't know if I want to do this. Take a step back. The card choices while assessing the budget and make cuts where necessary to keep the agenda moving forward. Uh, if you read this one, please go right ahead. Uh, I'd probably do this one, Rock to the Rockies. No matter what one calls the redoubtable, redoubtable Nelson Rockefeller, whether that be part of the son of the Rockefeller oil family, philanthropist, or liberal progressive Republican, Rocky, or certified painting hoarder, one thing is clear to everyone that listens to him is about fiscal matters for even a moment, that he's a staunch fiscal conservative. That's why the Hart administration has begun to set up discussion with him and his faction of the Republican Party. I have a new budget will make uh, Rocky feel faint, but the silly man as many Democrats call him could be the difference between life and death for a general regarding Republican backing. It may irritate our administration to have the, to consult with the Rockefeller and his ilk, who are in fact sometimes pejoratively referred to as the Rockies for how immovable they can be. But Hart knows that they, we have no choice. Republicans are liable to oppose these plans no matter what, and so we need to do what we can to calm their nerves and keep our coalition as stable as possible no matter what we end up deciding. <clears throat> yeah, but must not be, must fall, must fall, buddy buddy, or buddy bud. Whether the average American realizes it or not, they have likely encountered a product of the bud company. If they've ridden busy highways or city subways, watch interstate sleeper cars roll past, or seen a rusted hulk of on rails yearning for better days, a rolling stock was likely produced at the Bud plant in Philadelphia, Bud Sun Ubiquity, an American passenger rail made it the natural choice of the Hart administration for creating the nation's first high speed rail train. As early as nineteen sixty six, Bud engineers devised plans for a bullet train capable of reaching speeds exceeding the Japanese Shinkansen. A shortage of fundings that kept their stubby cigar like Metro Liner <clears throat> design. Could find at the drafting board until a hard administration contract. Offering swiftly dispelled worries about finances, Secretary of Commerce Mike Monroney had made the closing of the train gap his personal goal and showed his devotion to their operating budget before long the bud, bud plant was tooled and staffed for an expected surge in Metro Atlanta orders, but an unexpected act of internal dissent brought the build-up to a halt. In a letter sent to Secretary Monroney, ten budget engineers described their misgivings with the current Metro Atlanta design, setting the design's age and the applicability of more modern designs. In short, the Metro Atlanta could be better if only given the time. Prototype Metro Line was operating with the Pennsylvania Railroad stock fell 50 miles per hour shorter than intended 150, which the engineers promised they would rectify after a thorough but timely rework of the entire design, such a chassis already dubbed the Superliner by their proponents, would meet and possibly exceed federal performance criteria. <clears throat> Adopting the Superliner would throw the butt, butt plant into chaos and require a similarly thorough rework of re existing assembly lines, but the potential to produce a truly spectacular train. Seen in his uh, department office, the Commerce Secretary mulled his options. Proceed his plan with a working train or heed the engineers and pivot towards a new design, risking risk being made obsolete or revised an entire program of the misgivings of the engineers. Metro Liner, the modern train, futures train, Superliner. I don't know, man. Uh, this seems like this seems really risky. I kinda want to see what the Superliner does though. Hmm. That's pretty much what we do want, though. In essence.
Oh, you're just depending there. That's fine. <clears throat> as much as we can. And we could do taking down the bosses too, but if you want to do this, please go right ahead. Or we do this one too, but maybe. Uh, well, the Republicans kind of like us. I mean, we're really good with them, so. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Ooh, that's not good though. Let's do this. So take it, talking down the bosses first. Yeah, for the boys, that'd be good to do. In a situation where we need to pinch every penny possible to ensure efficient functioning and move as hard as fast as we can and not only get the G GOP and other potential hostile factions and reason to hit us, corrupt and incompetent contractors are something that we cannot tolerate. The size of action must be taken to secure ourselves against the prospect. <clears throat> Careful, and thorough audits must be conducted of every company and every contract that has been bid upon. Executives and managers should be closely examined for embezzlement, graft, grift, and any other kind of problematic behavior. Materials used in construction should also be monitored to ensure that they are used for the exact things they were earmarked for, and nothing else without very good reason to change plans. There's likely a drawback to all this, unfortunately. If we go about auditing things with our customary zeal, delays are no mere possibility but a certainty. It'll be up to the president and Amtrak leadership to determine the extent to which the cost of delay is outweighed by the cost of malfeasance, corruption, and comes not investigated and stopped. I know I'm reading pretty fast, and I apologize once again, but there's there's just so much, man, and I like it, but still. Nothing's being voted on here, too, so. 62.5, nothing's really changed across the aisle. So, I say never. Never will American heroes give the grave spat on while American and Japanese elites cavort about their champagne. Never will our great nation abandon the millions, no billions of slaves toiling at the God Emperor's pleasure. Never will Henry M. Jackson's voice echo through the Senate floor. Hubert Humphrey winced as it rang in his ears, of course. He'd been expecting a treaty of detente with America's most hated enemy of history to cause fierce opposition, but that didn't mean he had to like it. Look, Billy whispered in the ear of J. William Fulbright, the national senator from Arkansas. I know you and this administration have some agreements on the issue of civil rights, but I also know you're an honorable man. Committed to a more peaceful world, and that's what this detente will achieve. We'd never make friends with Japan. We just don't think the best way to work against their influence is American boys dying in every jungle with a few rebellious peasants. With free trade and open markets, we can steal the sphere out from under them, and that's what this detente lets us do. Fulbright shifted in his seat, adjusting his glasses. I certainly see the logic you're in saying. You're saying, uh, Hubert, he said. I just know if it's a move I can make right now. Strong's been carrying on about this whole affair in front of the whole country. If we go against it, then I'm just asking it myself primary by one of those schleify crazies. Humphrey leaned in, elbows on his knees. Believe, Bill, believe me. If we take this risk, the administration won't be forgetting it. I'm sure I can put a good word in the president for extra funding for the Fulbright program. Especially with an entire third of the world getting more friendly to Americans thanks to the treaty. Fulbright nodded slowly. That would be very generous of the president. I appreciate that this administration is willing to cross party lines for the good of the country. A few more pleasantries, and Humphrey was on his way again. Scoop Jackson's speech still thundering throughout the Capitol. Every vote counts. Which is 61, 37, so we should play. We get it. If you're going to that, please go right ahead. Transportation form has very little influence. Like, what is going on? This is bugged as all heck. Almost 97% done for this one. It's very good. It's awesome. Um, that's, I'm not super concerned about like research and stuff, but happy November. <sighs> very good. Large scale stuff, jet bomber, stealth stuff, blackbirds, sure, why not? Because we're worth it, that's right. Taking down the, talking down the bosses. And I would like to do stuff too, so. Oh, do we need all these? Oh, another event isn't distracting. Okay, that's fine. The democracy mobile. There's no modern invention that better captures American belief in personal freedom than the car. Where well, that a person can go anywhere. Whether that's in their hometown or across the country. They own just not a vehicle with the ability to choose. This is our freedom is what drove so many Americans to buy cars for themselves and their families. That's what allowed the automotive industry to reach such enormous size through the first half of the century. While times have changed, Philip Harwell believes in the promise of motor companies like uh, Ford and General Motors, all of all the innovators of Detroit. It's going to turn back the clock and work with those signs of manufacturing to ensure the automotive industry maintains its peak profits. Oddities and audits. Oh boy. Efficiency will go up. Uh, poverty is getting worse. Oh god. Um, the Art Administration's transportation agenda was, to say the least, sweeping. It ordered. Expansion to the Department of Commerce's Bureau of Transportation, including a hefty purse for construction and acquisition projects across the country. Whatever new Bureau of Transportation building up, building sprung up, jobs for road paving, laying a rail, building overpasses, uh, viaducts, underpasses, and tunnels all at once in a thousand different places across the country. Better money bought trains, buses, airplanes, uh, station furnishings, employee salaries, and neat new Amtrak-based cups for drink services on every train. 
What's most significant? It's single investment in American infrastructure from top to bottom and touched nearly every decrepit hindering transportation in the U.S. It was revolutionary, and that's why they hated it. They were the party bosses, and war healers, and blue-collar backslappers. They made politics happen in the urban democratic strongholds and years of underhanded machine politics. A crown Chicago mayor, Richard J. Daly, is a king. He told me the mayor needs a political solvency, and I think we both know what that means, explained Secretary of Commerce Mike Monroney. See it across from the president, who loosely masked his discontent. As senator from Oklahoma, Monroney thought little of the Democratic Chicago mayor, but recent dispatches on the transportation issue quickly soured his opinion. Mayor Daly's uh, office had kindly informed Monroney that the union ought to for offering this full support on account of the uncertainties a project like this brings. What is this? asked Scott bluntly, tossing the memorandum onto his desk, which recommended six months to audit the transportation initiative. Am I supposed to ask Congress for six months because he has some doubts on our accounting? It's frustrating. Authors of audit, we need support. They'll come around. Uh, I'm going to save again just in case. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm gonna say no. We have we don't have a ton of Democrats, but like still, like 31. Uh, we'll see. Full steam ahead. The past several months, the Howard administration has crisscrossed the country, leaving Washington and other havens to take charge of things. To the astonishment of observers, they have not been the usual humdrum. Uh, bureaucrats that were once seen mocked in the papers, they have been filled with a bounce and an excitement for American infrastructure that is stirring. Their verb and brains was, has made the most impossible seem possible. Let's lay of initiative. The push for high-speed rails is possible only because of these people and their desire to make America better. We owe it to them to the American people to pass a bill that bring about real change in transportation. What can help? That can help with consumers of all types living their lives. With new funding, we can bring people together and show them what, what an active federal government can do. Path forward. What does Washington do when it doesn't? Understand something? It creates a study commission, of course. From Teddy Roosevelt's Commission on Economy and Efficiency to Kennedy's Commission on the Status of Women, these task forces are a way to bring experts to the table to study a problem, consult the public on their views, and develop evidence based policies that can solve the issue. Now we have the opportunity to launch a commission of our own to understand how Americans use cars in their daily life. The findings will be essential in guiding our policies to help drivers and boost the automotive industry. We'll just have to make sure the task force is thorough and unbiased in its work and that can actually follow through on the solutions to suggest. Otherwise, this could end up a boondoggle between friends. Oh boy. Oh god. I hope we can get stuff done. The old man likes us more. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna use the consequence for that. Anything else? Yeah. Between friends, imagine for a moment that America not to do something from the present. Uh, connected by layers of linkages, created courtesy of a responsive, ever improving infrastructure network. Uh, in this America, it was possible to go anywhere at any time. It would require time, a bit of walking, and a fair fare to keep the lights on. This transportation dreamland runs the trains every five minutes, connecting stations and areas of public interest by bus lines at an even greater frequency. Along rail roadways, filled with affordable automotives, and serve the web's gaps. An investment in the public transportation infrastructure is a payment towards Americans' accessibility and delivers on the prompts that the United States should be enjoyed by all its citizens. At least that's the idea, President Philip Hart has stated. And it's impromptu lecture with a curt gesture. The speech's only audience, Vice President Chet Morrison, is feigned applause with a chuckle before leveling his response, barely telegraphing. My only concern will be the books before the President slump loudly back into his chair. After a brief pregnant pause, the Vice President smirked and prodded in a low voice. You don't think Secretary Jacobs has bugged the office, do you? No, replied the President, who aimed, who smiled despite rolling his eyes. Morrison continued, then, what's the problem with some budget talks between us? If you're concerned about what to cut, take it out of our hands, why not? Pull it, see what the people want, giving us some breathing room. It seems reasonable enough, though, Hart, as he leaned forward to grab his desk phone, put me through to the Census Bureau. The administration's efforts are located in the decision tabs. Pay close attention over the next few weeks. Hmm. 50% more hawkishness, huh? And in the town, urban wealth will decrease their disdain, commerce will decrease. Street corner, huh? Zip it, talk it. Uh, maybe. Civil rights, cost goes up, efficiency goes down. 6%. Um, alternative movement. I think I read this one last time, too. Yeah. And then for the boys, obviously the military is America's front line against fascism and they should be reap the rewards of what we plan. By increasing the technological investment, the military will receive access to cutting-edge technology that will make them stronger and the rest of us safer. While many will deride any investment or reliance on them as funding, the already powerful military-industrial complex in America is a necessary step that will rapidly increase their success. As the military prospers, and uh, so do we. For the research, the leading causes of the apathy come from... Pull folks on the streets. Survey Romney's men. Consumer apathy will increase by a value between 3 and 7%. Talk with Reuters goons. Investigate Nadir's raiders. Chat with the tree huggers.
Skew the wording. Mm. Let's go with the Reuters goons, maybe. So the pricing. Um, let's go with that one, maybe, and see what it's like. It's only three days, so we'll see. You guys can just go ahead and you will be fine without us. I know we shouldn't be doing tax hikes constantly, but 93 billion is just so good. Price concerns, indeterminate. Survey Rami's Ben. We'll keep going. The with this Libs win in Iran. It's finally over. We finally successfully lifted the liberal faction above all its enemies, and the fascists and communists remain are being dealt with as we speak. Though we suffer significant casualties, maybe, what matters is we finally have a part in the Middle East that can we count on. Negotiations with a new government have started, and we both believe that promoting our cause as long as we are holding them will rebuild. A handful of our soldiers remain in the country to subdue any rebel factions that could harm the Iranian leadership, since Tehran also suffered serious damage. Our engineers chose to stay behind so that the city would be rebuilt. In accordance with the Iranian aid bill, we also have sent economic and industrial advisors to the new government. The rebuilding of Iran will take time, but when it's complete, our sole ally in the Middle East will be even more formidable than it was before the war. The torch of liberty shines brighter than ever before in Asia. We can only hope it stays lit. So we get more political power, well, quite a bit more, a little more stability that we don't really need. All voters will more international some issue of foreign policy. Immediately, moderately shift support to the Democratic Party, which we want, and the Republican Party. Um, that'd be pretty nice. Focus geo change a little bit. Um, honestly, how much? Well, we're trying to get the path forward done as well right now, too. But it's almost 1972, my friends. Almost 1972. Another event isn't distracting the legislature. Uh, I'm not sure what is distracting us. We're lowering the speed limit right now, 43%. If not, uh, I will use consequence for that, too. Um, a low efficiency will increase the budget. A low budget will increase, decrease efficiency. Um, high power will increase crime. Social side, huh? So I use the consequence for this thing here, too. They have more sub sympathizers than us, but... Um, we got like 30 days for this as well. And then we'll be fully modernized, which would be very nice. Continue to transition to alternative energy. More infrastructure, GDP increase by 2% would be great. So we're, we're, we're making progress. Even though I wish we could do this, because it requires only one of the following. An interesting outcome from the survey is revealed. Okay. Alright, well, I do want to do it for the boys, too, so. There's enough of a budget surplus for everybody. Well, the Dover sh Shiver. One can add another innovation and technology that our boys in the military have instigated. Anthem. Enemy of Ambition. Thousands of phone calls and an untold number of post paid for response forms later. Census Bureau has successfully completed its most extensive non-census non survey of Americans to date, and the remarkable efficiency to boot. Respondents answered questions ranging from the satisfaction of the government transportation services to the priorities for future infrastructure. After weeks of waiting, the results were shown in a neat column rose and forwarded as a condensed teletype report to the White House. The Hart Administration's unofficial transportation task force, or group, sat around a folding table in the Oval Office, transfixed on the staple packet or pa of paper in silence. The Hill's president scanned page after page, searching for something remarkable. It was soon apparent that the report contained nothing of value. Nothing. No trends, no hard feelings, soft spots, just... Chet Morrison rocked in his chair, out of that boredom, speaking under his breath. J Jack and his buddy, best buddy, crap. Uh, with a sigh, President Hart laid his papers down and gestured to his cabinet for comments. Secretary Jacobs spoke up first, proposing they don't like or dislike anything in, their, in, in any remarkable amount, so why not tighten things as they are now? Regulations and subsidies go hand in hand. The mention of subsidies mentioned a deep groan from the vice president, who Hart passed by with a dismissing wave. We we'll have to be careful about codependence, said the president, sucking in air, but maybe we can try to get through those suits yet. Maybe it won't be so expensive. Aside from a few darting glances, the cabinet showed no solid reaction to Hart's concessive statement, and before long, moved on to other business. A marginal improvement, to say the least. Now, does that open us up for... No. A good old market. So we can't do the America art, which sucks. If you're wondering about that, please go ahead. Herculean task as well. Um, operator, which... I like this stuff. This thing's really cool. Look for a union label and driver clubs. That'd be oh my god, that looks so good. Yeah, that's really good across the board. Now, pimp my ride. One last touch. Cooking on the engine. Oh, this would be so nice too. Out of the DMV. Well, I guess we're going to good good old market. I guess. After many conversations with leading figures of American enterprise and experts at think tanks across D.C., the Commission found a solution to its ill plague in the automotive industry. 
subsidies. By providing their leading manufacturers with a little extra cash, as they do in Japan and Germany, our companies can lower prices and boost innovation. They can make America competitive internationally. Of course, this means we're going to be pumping a lot of resources into the Midwest. Those blue collar workers in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Ohio will be thrilled with all the jobs we're creating for them. It took a while to get for the benefits to trickle out of the region and across the nation. What do you mean, Eugene? What do you mean? Look at that, less than 85 billion. Even though we're in oil crisis and whatnot, and uh, for the boys, my friend, for the boys. Yes, let's go down. First checkpoint would be nice. Budge oxygen decrease disdain, that'd be nice too. But we're gonna go over here. Further investments will increase the efficiency of the national spirit. 1970, everybody, happy new year. Consumers' concerns with mileage and automobiles give us leeway to cooperate with major brands and get more fuel efficient cars on the road. Increase, increase in efficient production. Sure. Ooh, poverty will slowly increase, though. Budget and lose trust. While we're dancing with the devil through these subsidies, we all we risk uh, while we risk burning through some bridges. The incredible results from our investments are all but certain to regain trust among those we left behind. Look, innovation ain't cheap. We know that when we started, nothing of the things we want to accomplish with America's transportation are possible. We nickel and dime every project, and we've got corners to satisfy the impossible demands of the deficit, deficit hawks and conks in the national media. So yes, Philip Harper is going to be spending more money. Yeah, he's going to use his authority as president to authorize his stimulus package for the automotive industry. Yeah, it may cost some mild inflation. In the end, though, the money will be worth it. It is important. No, not necessary. Let me spend this money to ensure the success of our projects. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. What do you mean, Eugene? The reverberating rumble of uh, doors clattering shut behind Philip Hart signal the work at the White House was done for the day. Past the entrance halls, west facing entrance, if President Philip Hart can relax with his family, pretend vainly for a few hour, precious hours, and the hearts were just like any regular family. When those doors shut, the President had to the White House staff shortly after the inauguration with unusual sternness. They shouldn't open until morning. Still, the business found its way through the cracks, and President Hart was never truly free from work. Janie called Philip Hart, uh, stepping over a pile of shoes on the staircase before craning his eye to look up. A deep female voice returned, Mr. President, I have a high priority communique for you, to which Philip groaned. He ran to the band and started loosening his tie and met his wife with a kiss. Mrs. Hart handed her husband a glass of water and began, Phil, dear, somehow during my day I came into possession of this letter from Secretary McCarthy to... She slid the letter into his hand and tapped to his chest, to His Excellency the President. Great, thought Philip, who shifted their embrace to tear the letter open and began to read aloud, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> I'm writing to you regarding the most uh, recent agricultural investments, which I strongly disagree with. Uh... American agriculture is fragile ecosystem, and I'm worried I have not done enough for their administration in this regard. Uh, Philip murmured the rest of the letter to himself, finishing it and handing it to Janie as she read it. Philip remarked, Oh, I didn't think of it felt so strongly. Indeed, the letter. Uh, ooh, it was with paranoia that seemed to come from nowhere. Janie nodded in agreement, adding, Maybe he's under pressure. Why don't you invite him over? It's been a while since the heart's last a cap company with a Midwesterner and the Secretary of Agriculture otherwise seemed an amicable fellow. Content, Philip mused, Well, I'll phone Janie tomorrow. Then he found a zipper closing his lips and Begged off further work discussion for more important topics. Now, Jane, how was your day? Send military advisories? Attention, Turkestan have almost reached a boiling point. We must send military advisory regions in order to decrease it. Sure. They have 1,200, huh? Not bad. Um, look at that, 100%. Oh, so we get a star! Oh, we're gonna say 25. There it is. It's 100. percent It's slightly bigger and bolder than everything else. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, running still into a couple issues here and there, but you know, hey, we got one done. It's very impressive. I like that. The answer to everything, my friends. The swift warfare. Oh. Tip: Do's and don'ts. The happiness will decrease, increase the administration's progress on transportation, commerce will increase, efficiency will increase. I'm all about being efficient. Hawks may trouble but these pro consumer policies are simply the just thing to do, maybe hold us over during some trouble sometimes. But I don't want driver clubs. Bits and pieces. Oh, President Election election season, if you wonder about this, please go ahead. And we're gonna vote R and D. Bits and pieces. Four GM and Chrysler are calling the big three for a reason. Together, these giants control over 90% of all automotive sales in the United States. They invest b -b billions into their plants and use hundreds of thousands of producer cars. GM alone employs half the total population of Flint, Michigan. We need to work with at least one of these companies if we're going to get anywhere with our drive transportation vehicles or uh, transform transportation. Under the label, uh, promoting public uh, private partnership, the Hart administration will negotiate a contract with Ford or GM, the bigger of the three, to build train parts and other equipment for the U.S. government. The only question is which of the companies we award the billion dollar contract. But I think we're going to end the episode here because I have to get some other stuff. So prediction, we get more Democrats probably, but we'll see. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like.
subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue trying to beat the crap out of the debt. And really, basically at this point, just try to beeline through the focus tree so that we can improve our transportation and pretty much everything else. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.